First, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. This is Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. There you go. Taking a look right now at a whole lot of galaxies. And we've got a couple of different images for you there. I'm just starting off right with that. I mean, you know, what bigger way can we come in with than uh, 10 million galaxies in one image? So we're giving you your money's worth right there. Hello, we are live streaming here from the Fox 12 Oregon Newsroom as we do every weekday starting around 1 p.m. going throughout the afternoon. And uh, we cover a wide range of topics here on this show. So thanks for being a part of it. Don't forget to download that Fox 12 Oregon app. But yeah, that image that you just saw there is incredible. It comes from the world's largest digital camera from that Vera Rubin Observatory. And so we're gonna get into this. We're gonna talk about this. Some, some people may have seen some of these images uh, floating around or, or may have seen some of the news releases about this, but we wanna find out more about it. And to do so, we're bringing our expert on, and that is Jim Todd from OMSI. And Jim, always great to have you here on the show to help explain this, uh, these, these things, these mysteries of the universe and make them make a little bit more sense for people who are not maybe as educated uh, in everything associated with it. And uh, that's why we like, like getting to have these conversations. So, so thanks, Jim. Yeah. And, you know, I think to start off, can you tell us, you know, about this image and where this comes from? Well, these images are incredible, first of all, and just as you pointed out, uh, they are just absolutely stunning. And they came out last Monday, um, what we call the world's largest digital camera. We're talking about in the neighborhood of 3,200 megapixel. And that's just a huge amount of data. And as you can see that it's very interactive. And the, the advantage of this particular uh, observatory is that it does a, what's called a very large field of view. Well, Hubble and James Webb Telescope is more detailed, but this one is going to be taking uh, about four times a week. It's going to be taking tons of data, and you can see not millions, but billions of galaxies and more details than ever before. And uh, so we're going to get a lot of information and knowledge just from this uh, observatory. It's very exciting. And the advantage is that we're going to be able to see more of the asteroids, comets, millions and billions of galaxies in real time. Because it's taking pictures virtually every week, and it will for the next 10 years. And by the end of 10 years, there probably will be in the neighborhood of 500,000 terabytes of data. And it can be shared to the world. And so this is amazing. And you can see the color, you can see the details, and there's so much information that we can gain just from looking at it. You can just look, look at that picture. That's a very small portion of the sky, very, very small. But yet we're seeing millions of galaxies. Now we're gonna get into the billions, and it's gonna be right textbook again and again, and details that we have never seen. So we're, we're pretty excited about this. And this is all just started last Monday, and it was funded by the National Science Foundation and Department of Energy, and the Galaxy, uh, the uh, observatory is located in Chile. It's a perfect location for this. So uh, this is just only the beginning. And this, uh, as you mentioned, these images came out, you know, and there's so much detail in here, in these. And, you know, can you give me just an idea? And, and by the way, for everybody out there, these, these images are available publicly. You can go and and look at these yourself we've got links at kptv.com so this is this is all things that you know everybody can get their hands on um but i'm looking at it you know and i think this is pretty incredible but when i'm looking at like say this image right here are these all galaxies that i'm looking at these are all galaxies and these wow. galaxies contain millions of stars so any any of these galaxies could be uh anywhere have millions of light years away and you can see different colors and you can see the stars and some of those may be even uh, other solar system. And uh, we'll maybe we'll be tracking asteroids. And more importantly, what's really the main purpose of this observatory is to observe dark energy, dark matter. That's why it's named Rubin Observatory. Because it's the first woman astronomer uh, that really was able to understand the concept of dark matter, dark energy, and the galaxy. But there's this picture, particular picture of the lagoon. And everybody's familiar with the lagoon and the telescope. It's, it's very popular in the summer. But this is the lagoon. Look at the color. And the thing about this observatory is that it has color wheels. Um, 
I think it's about six color wheels that can filter out the colors and get all the data that way. And so that's one of the advantage of that. There's the great details. And another important thing to remember, this is a ground-based observatory. We can get access to that data almost immediately. Where you have the James Webb, you have the Hubble. You're limited to how you transfer the data to Earth. With this, you can get immediate data and send it off in a very large array of uh, computers to be able to, to really compilate the, in, the information that comes back. So this is very exciting and this is really just showed the trend of technology and where it's going and what we have in our possession. And it's going to be available to the world. So uh, that, that's the exciting part. So I can't wait to get my hand on this uh, material uh, for our planetarium so that we can analyze the data and create a wonderful view of the sky. Is this something that you would be able to incorporate this kind of data into the planetarium at, at OMSI? Yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. And uh, so when they released it on Monday, it was what's called Domecast. It was Domecast across the world. And so we got immediate in information right there. And for us, we'll be able to hopefully, we'll, the data is going to be huge. It's almost too big for the computers or servers that there's so much information that we just have to put it and look, enjoy the view as they come. But it's just definitely going to be a new trend for Planetarium to be able to show off this information. And it, it's especially important, too, that this observatory can be served as an alert when we have a near-Earth object like an asteroid or something, a very large debris that could be heading towards the Earth. I'm, for, me, for me, I'm delighted that somebody is looking. We're looking for these debris that could collide with the Earth. Now we have more data to use you know, to predict these possible collision in the future. I think that's really interesting. I'm gonna, I wanna ask just a little bit more about that. So, I mean, these images are incredible with all the detail and all the galaxies and everything that you can see with that. Um, but you had talked something about you know, near Earth objects or, or asteroids or things like that that we could maybe also see with this. Is that something else that these kinds of pictures can reveal? Yes, and that's what the advantage of this particular camera or observatory is that it's real time. It has a much brighter field of view. Now, keep in mind, before uh, the Rubin Observatory, only 10% of the sky is being scanned for asteroids or near Earth objects, only 10%. That's not very comfortable. But now, with this particular uh, observatory, we can get data weekly and it can be tracking um, these asteroids. And since Monday, they've already have tracked 2,000 new asteroids that were not detected before, 2,000 in a single day. And so that was gonna multiply over time. We could see their trajectory, we can see their angle, their brightness. So it's just, just an amazing. That's why, why we uh, invest these, and into these kind of things to predict these kind of objects that could be colliding with the Earth. And I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all really exciting. I didn't even think about that aspect of it too, just looking at it from, you know, the protection standpoint and being able to model and, and track these. And imagine once they see them, then they can track where those asteroids are going. And then they have a map of, uh, I would assume, you know, where all these are. But that's a, mm -hmm. that's a whole lot of new ones just discovered in that short amount of time. Yeah, and we're going to see nova explosion. We're going to see quasars. We're going to see the formation of galaxy, collision of galaxies. It's just only the beginning. And so this is very exciting. And so this is going to be taking the picture consistently and constantly and then stitching all of this together. And so by the time it's done with this run, how big of a swath of the sky will we have? Well, they're going to be terabytes. There's going to be huge data. Data. I mean, it's just almost most computers will not be able to uh, hold this kind of data. And so that's, that's the big thing right there, literally. And so that we are looking at data that we're going to so large, but yet you can zoom in on it just like you were doing. You can see yeah. details, a very small segment of the sky. You see the colors, and the colors tell us a lot. You can see that some of these are galaxies. This is the De Virgo cluster, by the way, in the southern portion. This is our neighbor, because the Virgo cluster is right overhead right now. 
But this is our neighbor, our galaxy, the Milky Way, the Andromeda. It's part of this local group. And this is an area that's some of the brightest and the biggest galaxy that we can see from our own uh, ga uh, galaxy. And so all of that is outside of our own galaxy. And so you can see that's a, every little, little speck there is galaxy. Some are very small, some are very big. There it looks like you got a red star okay, because it's red. So that's a very bright red star. And you could see, just looking at that information, and you see gravitational lensing. Uh, you'll see all of that. And it's going to be amazing material for classrooms and college and high school. And, and it gets people excited and looking at that. Look at that. Look at the details on that. And so everywhere you look, you can see a little information. And I can imagine every astrophysicist, every college classroom going to be able to look at this and going to see, understand the distance and the makeup and uh, the layout of our incredible universe. Wow. I mean, yeah, you can just zoom in so far uh, with all that information. I mean, I don't know how, you know, and these, these are many, many, many millions of light years away, I'm sure, for a lot of those galaxies. But, yeah, that's just incredible just to think about each one of those, you know, those billions of stars. I'm, yeah, I myself am not an astrophysicist, but I will be, I go down the rabbit hole of staring at this. And, uh, yeah, it, it, you know, the astronomy is such a wonderful field because it's, it's just here it is running on our own backyard. And we're getting better understanding what's out there. We ask more questions. Is it going to be a great classroom material? And as well as for the planetarium, we're going to be able to share this kind of information and we'll learn so much from it. And it can continue to grow. And for the next 10 years, we have the James Webb Telescope. We have the Hubble. And we have this now Rubin Observatory. Look at all the data that we have access to. Yeah, and that's just going to be exponentially more as more and more of this comes out as well uh, to follow along with it. Well, uh, Jim, anything else that you think is important for people to know just about this coming out, you know, and maybe just understanding how important this is? Yeah, well, this is very important and because, you know, people say uh, why we need this kind of uh, instrument and why we need an observatory like this. Well, there's a lot of value to it. And this is incredible. And it's not just serving as pretty pictures, but it's providing us with the alerts, getting into awareness of our surroundings, prepare for the future, and at, at answer more questions that we've uh, been, been asking for years. And now we're going to be able to have more data uh, available to us. Wow. Ed, amazing. Well, Ed, it's very exciting to see it. I'm excited to see, you know, what's, uh, obviously has got some more things on this as well, but just uh, really cool to talk about, you know, exciting developments like this. This is something that's you know, unique. And as you mentioned, just for so many reasons, it's so important to have. So Jim, I always love talking to you about all that and, uh, and having you on here to, to discuss any of this when we get these new discoveries and new images like this. My, so thanks my for, pleasure. Thanks for okay, my pleasure and there's more to come, that's for sure. And then uh, we'll have more to talk about. So, <laughs> all right, okay. thanks, Jim. Okay, thank you. And for everybody watching, this is Fox 12 Now, so we're live streaming here at the Fox 12 Oregon Newsroom. We cover a wide range of topics, and sometimes we get to talk about things like this. You know, we have our own local expert with Jim who's joining us to talk about that, and uh, we, can, uh, we can cover these things on here, longer-form discussions like this. So if you have an idea for a segment, feel free to send me an email, fox12now at kptv.com. We've got links to those images at kptv.com as well. So you can go there, and then you can go directly to the website and... Uh, scroll through these yourself if you so desire. But thanks for joining us. I'll talk to you soon. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.